Okay, we wanted to show this real quick how we beveled this. Do it at your own risk, but I had to guard off my four and a half inch grinder. I had a cutter blade that was smaller than this, and I went in here at an angle to get this thinner out here. There, that might be a better shot. Then I used this, which it was tapered from another project, and I did go this way a lot, but making sure I keep the angle on my stone. And to do that, I'll change it once in a while. So I'm always wearing the tip more than the back used for tapered work. Thought so I'd show that. So when this goes in here, I know it's not a, a hot rod or a scientific, but it will have more of a smooth transition. Use some big technical words there. It'll flow better. And I will grind this smooth. When I'm done, I will take some of the threads out and smooth this. I want a smooth flow in there. So I'm start I'm really starting to like this idea. I said, make sure when you braze the weld it's just a square, it's not all crooked or something. I will grind this with the four and a half inch grinder, which will be quicker than on the big grinder, it'll be there all day. And I'll knock this down so it has a bevel to it, just for looks. I will take this off too. That's ugly. You never know where it's going to end up at. So we'll take all this off. The stamping from the casting. That'll all be removed for it's braised. But I thought I'd show that. That makes a lot smoother transition than the edge of the pipe there. There's a lot of bevel there. It's hard to see on the camera and the lighting. But I think you can see it. A nice, smooth different than just having your edge of your pipe. Of course, this is thinner out here. If you look at this pipe, see how that's made? There is a pebble to that. Like the countersink. Careful working this stuff, you don't ma mangle up your threads. I picked the best side. Be careful you don't mangle your threads up. If you do, hopefully you know how to use a hacksaw blade and triangle file, which I've saved pipe threads before. I'm going to use pipe dope on here. It does kind of glue it hard, but it did come out of the stove. So it's better than it rusting and corroding in the stove. I just use regular pipe dope. The stuff that plumbers use. Non-hardening. You get the idea. It'll be a smooth transition. Won't spend too long on that. That's a lot bigger out here than it is in here. I'm trying to funnel the air in. I'm trying to get the suck in there. It's like a carburetor, you look down a carburetor, venturi, it sucks in like a little mini funnel. That's what we're trying to achieve. Go ahead and get back to work. Okay. We finished brazing this. We tapered it. We do have some pictures at the end where we did taper this with the four and a half inch grinder. And when we're done with the brazing, a lot of our Grinding on the brass was just a sanding drum because your stones will pick it up. So on the metal I used the stone and then I also went over top of it with that. I did this good a job just to show how nice you can make this look. Now it's tapered. Now it doesn't look like you just chopped this and half shoved it over a pipe. I didn't want it looking ugly. I wanted it to look like it was made for a purpose that way. Kind of like a coupler or reducer. You could have cut this up closer so you didn't have as much threads, but I do want it sticking out of the stove that far. You'll get about half these threads will be in there. I do want it sticking out that far. Next is the plate. I got it kind of roughed out. This will be like a tang. You can always add a longer handle to it. I could have found a piece of metal without this, but it kind of helps center, center it. You can see where my scribe marks where I centered it. But there will be a nut welded there, nut or bolt, if I decide which way to go. I may braze the nut there and put the bolt in there. If you make it just right, you can have a spring on there. You can have a spring instead of the spring being out here on the bolt. I think I can make a spring system back here so when it tightens, it, there's a spring pulling it. So it would be like a Bigger nut or worse where the bolt goes through, put a spring on the end. It'll be self-explanatory if that's how I do it. I have to find a spring yet. But 
I do plan on brazing a bolt here and drilling the hole out more a nut, I should say, correct myself, brazing a nut here so it does have a bolt go through it. That way you can always replace the bolt, do whatever. Uh, use a lock nut, like the nylon lock nuts. But I do plan on finding one long enough and putting a spring on there. So this is spring loaded. It's going to act like a big choke plate air inlet. It will swing. So so whatever. That's why I want to make sure make sure you have your whatever you mount up high enough so when you swing it all the way open, okay, you're getting the hole open as far as you can. It'll be self-explanatory when I'm done. But normally I wouldn't have done this good a job. I might just weld it with a little 16-inch rod, my mini welder. I just wanted to show how nice you can make this look. Uh, you could also heat this back up with the torch again and put some black carbon on it if you don't want to paint it. That's another option I might do. This may just be heated up and put some carbon over top of it. Spray paint. It'll last for a while. You can use the black barbecue paint. It's not on the hottest part of the stove. But enough of talking about that. We're almost done. This will be a several part to these videos. I wanted to take the time to show some, some of the details. These do work good. I tried to stay away from the brass with these because they will plug up no matter what color they are. But I did use the big four and a half inch grinder to get this taper to here. Get the end of that out of the way. I do have some pictures where you can study it in a little more detail. Just put a taper there. That one you braze this. And this is what I call sweat brazing. I only used enough. I did get a little bit too much up here, but I wanted to make sure. This was hot. This was hot. And I applied the heat here. I put flux on my brazing rod. Let it suck in just like you'd have flux on a copper pipe soldering it, so it would suck this down in here. I didn't put as much as where you'd see it in here, but I know it's in there. I wouldn't trust this to hold a lot of pressure or anything on a pipe, uh, maybe on a water pipe or something, but it's not for pressure use, so you're, you're safe there. Just try to get it filled in with whatever you use, welding, so it doesn't suck air when this is shut. That was the whole purpose. We want to see how good this works. We want to shut it off as tight as we can. This was on a piece of memory paper like this to find the high spots where that casting was. I ground that off. I used a sander flapping disc, four and a half inch grinder. Then I used this. So it is smooth enough. This is going to shut good enough. We're not going to be that picky. I did round the corners off. Round, round your corner off there. It will shut tight enough. We just don't want no sparks coming out or popping out or nothing. Okay. That's the last part you'll see is when I have the little door part made. 